Lately, I've been seeing a lot of posts all over social media that have left me genuinely quite surprised. People have been uploading their astro photos into ChatGPT or other AI tools and asking them to enhance the image. And the results are genuinely amazing. Seriously, they look very sharp, colorful, contrasted, faint nebula details, pinpoint stars all over the image, all the way to the corners, and you know, nebula details like we've never seen before. Today we will be delving into this question and by the end of today's video we will have a better understanding of how AI works and whether that is still really the original image or not. My name is Lutza and you're watching The Space Koala. I started zooming into one of these AI enhanced photos and took a closer look comparing the original picture with the AI enhanced one. Something weird immediately stood out. There were stars where they shouldn't have been stars. There were details and nebula structures where in the original image it was just noise. There were filaments that were just not visible at all in the original image. What, what is going on here? I think to understand this we need to get in under the hood and see how these AI tools actually work in the background. So let's actually zoom out for a second and have a look at what is behind all of this and that is a neural network. What's a neural network? Imagine a very simple diagram, just one neuron. It has two inputs and one output. The inputs get combined using a basic formula. In this case, the output will be equal to the bias, which is an offset, plus the first weight times the first input, and then the second weight times the second input. So what happens if we set that bias or offset to zero? and both weights to one, that just simplifies down to a sum of the two input values. Quite simple, right? So let's add more neurons. We can chain them together into what are called layers, and this gives us a basic neural network. This structure lets us model more complex relationships, not just sums, but actual patterns. The inputs also don't have to be just numbers, they can be letters, words, pixels of an image, whatever you like. And the network can also produce multiple outputs. And this is, in essence, how large language models, ChatGPT and the like, work. All it is, is just a huge, enormous stack of interconnected neurons doing math like this on a huge scale. In practice, of course, that bias and the weights are not zero. So how does the model, how does the AI know what weights to use? This is where training comes in. Let's go back to our simple example. We give the model a bunch of inputs, inputs one and two with an output of three, then three and four with an output of seven, and then five and six with an output of 11. This also tells the system what the correct output is. Then the model tries to adjust itself so that it actually minimizes the delta between its output and the expected result. In real world problem, it's not like this because we usually don't actually know the precise relationship between the input and the output data. So we have to let the model try and figure out and approximate this relationship as best as it can. By combining more layers and more neurons, the model will be able to approximate and figure out more and more complex patterns, but it will always remain an approximation and therefore there will always be some level of uncertainty. Since the model cannot cover every possible case, there will be times when the output is actually incorrect and the model will give the wrong answer. For large models like ChatGPT, this model consists of billions and billions or even trillions of parameters, but it can never be perfect. Depending on the goal of the training, we can diverge into two very different types of models. We can get a discriminative model, which uh, has the aim of enhancing or classifying data, for example, and this would be things like deconvolution, image sharpening, 
star detection, noise removal, things like this. Or we can go into a very different direction where it creates not a discriminative, but a generative model. And this model generates new data based on the data that it was trained on. And this is how Dolly, ChatGPT, or Gemini work, for example. So when we're in the second case and we have a generative model and this generative AI starts adding filaments or stars or structures that were just not there in the input data, we have crossed a line there and this is no longer ash photography. The new image, while it might be very nice, this is not a representation of the input data or the picture that you took, but this is new data that was generated from scratch by the model. Why is it that ChatGPT, for example, can give you very different results with the same exact prompt. So sometimes you would give it a picture, say enhance it, and it would enhance the image. And another time you would send it the same exact image with the same exact words, and it would just generate a whole new picture based on that. For the longest time, I was trying to figure this out and here's what I got. It turns out that the very first message or image that you send into a brand new chat kind of sets the tone. So if this first image is not too detailed, blurry, ambiguous, just not the best image ever, it tends to trigger ChatGPT into going in this generative mode. For example, if you send one of these images and say something along the lines of, please enhance this photo of the pillars of creation, ChatGPT will often respond with a fully AI generated image of the pillars, not a cleaned up or better version of your original input photo. At this point, the model seems to lock into this generative mode. And even if you send it nicer images, it will keep generating full AI generated images. So I tested this, I have sent it a nicer, kind of more detailed image of the pillars of creation, but it didn't care. It kept generating fake images of the pillars of creation. I have also sent it M63 and it would just give me an entirely different galaxy with some of the original stars and spikes of my input image. At one point, I also decided to test how far it would go. So I sent it one of my images of the sculpture galaxy and I went with the prompt, please enhance this photo of the Andromeda galaxy because I wanted to test if it actually cares about what's in the image. And it turns out it doesn't because even though my input image was the sculpture galaxy, it would just generate a picture of the Andromeda galaxy as an output. So this kind of shows that my input image had very little impact on what the ChatGPT output image was. So then I had to do a counter test. I started with the sharp-ish image of M63 and asked it, can you please enhance this photo of M63? At this time, because the very first input image was already a relatively good one, it didn't trigger the model to go into generative mode. So from this point on, it actually stayed in this enhancement mode. So it actually gave me a new and enhanced version of my M63 galaxy. Whether it is actually enhanced or not, that is up to everybody's preferences, but there's no doubt that this is a version of my image. So then I followed up and I started sending it lower and lower quality images in the same chat where it wasn't in generative mode, it was like in this enhancement mode. And it kept just giving me back enhanced versions of the actual input images. So from what I can tell you, what ChatGPT decides to do is not really about the prompt that you give it, but the whole context, especially how the conversation starts. To make sure that I don't bias it in any way, in the settings I turned off the usage of any memory of previous conversation history. So this way, every chat can start with a clean slate. And then based on the first image that you send in, it will kind of decide if it wants to generate new images for you or if it wants to enhance the actual images that you send. And this difference between generating an entirely new image or enhancing the input image 
is absolutely critical. And this is what we have to keep in mind every time we bring AI into astro processing. That raises the very valid question. What about the AI based tools that we actually use and love? How can we be sure that they do not enter in this generative mode? How are they trained to avoid that? So let's take the example of Blur Exterminator and let's make it very simple to understand how it was trained and how it works. Imagine you have a perfect sharp image, then you apply a blur like what uh, imperfections in your telescope would do to light. This is what we refer to as convolution. It is a mathematical operation that approximates the real world problem. Now imagine a magic wand that can just undo that blur. That is deconvolution. It is a classic and not at all new tool in astrophotography, but configuring it correctly with the parameters has always been notoriously difficult. Tuning the parameters incorrectly can lead to artifacts and ringing around structures and so on. This is what Blur Exterminator does in a very smart way. It's trained on high quality starless images, then synthetic star fields are added to it. These are then convolved using different optical distortion models. And then the AI is trained to reverse the blur to make those synthetic stars sharp again. Because the stars are fake and they're not in the location where the real stars would be, the model of Blur Exterminator never actually sees any real image of real stars. Every sample is uniquely generated. The model never learns what a real nebula looks like with stars. Therefore, it is impossible that it would use the training data to reconstruct the actual stars and structures in space. The only thing the model learns is how to fix those star shapes and how to unblur the blur. Another huge benefit of Blur Exterminator is versus doing deconvolution manually is that it works on small patches in the image. So even if the distortion is different in different parts of the image due to issues in your optical train, it is able to work out locally what is the best operation to resolve the local distortions. All of this means that Blur Exterminator and other similar tools do not and cannot hallucinate. It will not add stars where there are no stars in your image. It will not recover detail that is not there. If you only have noise and the detail is not somewhere present in your image, it will not recover it. If you are undersampled in your setup, it will not recover detail that was never recorded. It simply enhances what is truly there in your data by learning how these stars should behave and look. So this, in short, is the difference between Gen AI and a discriminative model. In reality, any model could be generative or discriminative. The big difference is how the model was actually trained. And as we know how, for example, Blur Exterminator was trained, we know that it is impossible for it to generate new data. AI and machine learning tools are definitely here to stay, but there is a huge difference between using AI to generate new data and generate an image versus using it to enhance the data that we already truly collected in a smart way. Because when the AI starts inventing data and generating new things, we are not doing astronomy, we're not doing astrophotography, we are not reflecting what we recorded from the sky, we are just reflecting what is there in the training data of the AI. And I'm not saying that is bad, it could be beautiful, we could generate beautiful images, but it is not astrophotography, it is not photography at all. As both models are here to stay and even expand to every single tool that we use, I think it would be fantastic if these tools somehow signaled to us whether it is using generative AI or discriminative AI or not. Especially if we could find a way to ensure that any image generated by AI would be tagged in some sort of way. And that way we could distinguish those from true images that are representing real data, but may have used some 
AI-based tools in their processing. So what do you think? Do you use any AI-based tools? And here I'm especially thinking of whether you have tried to use ChatGPT or Gemini or any of those large language models to enhance your images. And did you actually get anything good? Did you get something bad? Or did you get something that was a little too good to be true? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear people's experiences and how ChatGPT interacts with you. It would be great to get more feedback on what triggers it to go into this generative creative mode versus actually working on our own images. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and especially subscribe to the channel, which helps me out, but will also help you find my content later on. Happy processing AI or not, and I wish you clear skies.